Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Boss. Check it, check it, check it. This is a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not none, you know, my dad, we're all gone. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now, at this moment, and go and like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, your Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, I mean, Snapchat, you name it, we're on it. But check out our Patreon channel because that's where we drop a lot of our full length interviews way before the clips start coming and on our YouTube membership. So if y'all love what we do, you love the brand, y'all been rocking with us, might as well support by signing up for our membership package. Man, hey man, listen man, we got a special guest in here today, he don't really need no introduction. This guy right here, man, you've seen him, uh, he's been on a lot of different flat platforms here lately. He, uh, I even seen an article on Vlad TV with you on it, man. Mm -hmm. uh, Tony Will Rich is in the building. What's going on, man? Tony motherfucking Will Rich. Woo, woo, Tony. You gotta add that in there. Wow. <laughs> yes. Man, That's so. That's my rap name. <laughs> mm -hmm. Tony. So I, the, the rap name, what you trying to say? You gonna be rich. Is that why the, so the name? So my name is pronounced Tony Will Be Rich. Right. So Will Rich, but you just gotta add the B in there. Will be rich. So I ain't rich yet, but I'm about to. You speaking it into existence. Speaking of manifestation. I'm the okay. king and queen of manifestation. Got you. Yes. Got you. I, mm -hmm. lo I love it. So, but but mm -hmm. when you're rich, what you gonna change the name to? Uh, Tony Rich. <laughs> Tony Rich. <laughs> okay. You know, I'll take Got the wheel it. out. Cause Got you know, it. it ain't gonna be no wheel B. You gotta take that out. So right now it's just will be rich. Cause okay. I ain't rich yet. Still got two dollars in my Got it. PNC account. You know. The biggest thing I keep seeing on the internet is you the first openly gay rapper that's a crip. Re yes, that's absolutely 100%, 1000 correct. Because we do have, a, we do, is there a openly gay, there is an openly gay rapper, right? Ain't? Yeah, but it's a bunch of them, and some of them not open, though. You know what I'm saying? But but it's definitely a bunch of them, but I'm just uh, trying to understand gangsta, the crib though. part. The, 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 the crib the part. The like, part of, see, I'm a gangster <laughs> rapper. So, like, it's no openly gangster gay rappers out here. You got Saucy Santana, he ain't no gangster. You got Lil Nas, he ain't no gangster. I'm a gangster. So that's the difference between me and all these other rappers. You so know what, what makes saying? you a gangster? Because I used to, be, I'm, well, no, I'm a crib, and I grew up on the south side. But I'm trying, I, yeah. How, how you did you get jumped in or sworn yeah, in? Or how did you? Say, how, did, how did we know you were official? Okay, so uh -huh. I was, I grew up on the south side, and I used to hang around, hang around with all these different crips, and we became friends. So like they was crips or shit, you know. I was in a little clique, you know, and shit. I was like, well, shit, I'm a crip too. And plus, oh, so I was you born. just say you a crip. You yeah. didn't actually. It, you I had to go through initiation. A, I didn't actually. I'm special, so I didn't have to go through certain rituals or whatever to, to get initiated in. I just just booted my little ass in, and now I'm a crip. That's just that, you know. So so like, they say you a crip, or you say you a crip? I say I'm a crip. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. I got it. I say I'm a crib and they know I'm a crib. Yes. <laughs> I, I you gonna I, know it because I, I'm from the south side. All you gotta do is just be born. You, It's just like being born into something. If you born into the family, your last name is Weirs, born on the south side. It's a bunch of crips on the south side. So now I'm a crib just because I was born on the south side. Okay. That's that. I, I, when I think about cribs in, in Fort Worth, the one that's really the most known person, OG that, person. Uh, is OG and he person. Said it was okay. And he, and he made a video about it, me and said, it's okay. So really? I, Do you know OG Percy? I watched the video that he made about me. What did he say? It's a, they asked him, they said, Do, are you okay with Tony Weirich being a crip? And he gay. And I, he said, he don't give a damn. That's him. He, it's okay. So now that's even more. So he, made, he really that's, pretty much, he, can, yeah. he gave you your approval, Kelly. That's, the, that's my initiation. That's my extra initiation right there. I'm already a regular crip. Now I'm a super crip just because he didn't say I could be a crip. But he a damn big, big celebrity crip. <laughs> so that makes me even better. You know, now I'm a crip for real. When he said that, oh, I'll be going right here banging. So he really kind of helped promote your cripism. Yes. That's it. But see, the thing about it is like, that, like it's, but I got a I, question. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Go ahead. So what do you know about being a crip? Okay, so the way that the world looks at, you know, being a gangster, being a crip and stuff like that, but blood. Say that. First of all, the way the world look at it is you gotta had you gotta had been to jail so many times, been shot at, 
been then shot stuff, then did this, then sold drugs and stuff like that. See me, I didn't did all. I didn't been in jail. A lot of times, I didn't been shot. I didn't been in shootouts. Half, you know, I don't. I might and not. You look shot like at it. people. Now I did not have a gun, but I got <laughs> shot at, and they shot out my windows out. So that, and I was in the car and I survived. That makes me even more of a crip, a gangster because I was, you know, I survived that. Like you, when you go through stuff like that, when you make it out alive, that just make you even more gangster. Cause you just first of all, I ain't even have a gun, and I'm up here still against the other people. So that make me just even more better. How you gonna be against people you ain't got no gun? <laughs> because that that make me even more powerful. The fact that I'm up here having a shootout with people and I don't even have no gun, that made me even more gangster than all the people that didn't been in shootouts with guns and I didn't even have no gun. That make me a crip. So oh, okay, but OG Percy say that, that it's, okay. it's okay, and yes. you you say because OG Percy second emotion on yes, your cripism. Yes, he second that. So that mean it really influenced you to say I know I'm cripping. Hey, so you know. go around now because you know it's everybody know about you. Yes, now I'm even more big dog now because he didn't say it there, so it's okay. It's like he didn't kind of put me in in a way. Wow. Even more than I already was because I already grew up on the south side, hung around other crips. Then been in jail, been shot at, been in shootouts, then kicked in. The, I've kicked in a dope before. Now, I, yeah. So you know, you do you know? Wait, you kicked, in, no, you kicked, kicked in a dope. Yes. Where was you with my you? home girl? What? Yes. <laughs> oh, both of y'all kicked it in we, together. No, she okay. When we got to the door, we kicked in the door, but it automatically opened because it was already open. It wasn't locked. It was already open, so we just kicked <laughs> and we went in. <laughs> we went in. It was it was an old friend or whatever. You know, this is when I was younger. It's me and my homegirl. We kicked in the door. The door was unlocked, but we kicked it though. So that makes it a kick though. I had on black forces. <laughs> so I went in that motherfucker. And uh my homegirl stole his iPad. Uh, he had like a whole bunch of chains on the dress. So I took a, a, Dor a empty Dorita bag and I scooped all the chains in the Dorita bag. I took it to uh, Sack and Save. This was a long time ago, back when Sack and Save was open on the south side. Took it to Sack and Save to the coin machine, put all the chains in there. I got $100 worth of coins. Uh, <laughs> it, was, it was lit. I'm telling you, we kicked in that door. I took his shoes. Man. But I got a question. So all of the... Because I'm still on this jumping in because I personally, I've never been in a gang, don't know anything about that. Mm -hmm. But I always assume that you have to be, you have to be a part, I mean, you have to be jumped in to be a part of the Crips. Absolutely. Do not. you know other people who are big in the Crip yes. industry that yes. have person. never been jumped in? You say Percy? That he has never, in? he's yeah, never yeah. been yeah. jumped so, in. So let me tell you, let me explain this. So the fact that he just sold that nigga you don't have to get jumped in you just i already proved your point just but, because of the person that you are like you first of all i don't know him at, at all but i know that he a, they say he a big ass time crip mm -hmm. so just the fact that you that that make you a crip automatically me born on south side crip so Damn, everybody born on south side is a crip my granny's a crip <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she lived your grandma be crippy yes she was How born on the know? south side. She still is cripping. She's still on the south side banging crip. I'm telling you, her favorite color blue, her car blue, everything about her blue. You better not go over there with you that You ain't got all no blue right now. I do, it's blue, little bits and pieces Little of blue. bits and blue. But you telling me that your grandma cripping. He is. Like, and her car blue. And her mama used to crip too. <laughs> that's how I'm telling you. That's why when people got was on them comments and stuff talking so much shit about me, I already know, like, when you comfortable about yourself and you know who you are, it don't phase me. I'm not on now one of them kind of things. I don't got to prove nothing to nobody. I know that I live this lifestyle. I was born into it. So you don't have no other Crips over there in your area that come and try to um, Tell you to stop claiming Crips. Hell no. And I'm not, they're not going to do that because, for one, it's social media. So they going to, of course, that's what social media is for, to get on there and hide behind a platform but I guarantee you, if they's in my face, they're not going to say that. They're not going to say They're that. not going to say, oh, well, you ain't no crib. Nobody's, they're going to walk past me and they're going to keep going. They're going to keep it cute, keep it respectful, and they're going to keep minding their business in person. Now, on Facebook, social media, Instagram, Twitter, whatever, you can type whatever you want to type. So let me ask you a question. So you were born, when you were born and you were growing up, you Fort Worth, right? Yes. Um, Southside. Southside. Mm -hmm. As a kid, eight, nine, mm -hmm. You just always wanted to be cripping. Well, actually, no. So, um, 
during them stages, so right. I didn't even know what a crip was. But okay. I always had it in me. I just what didn't know what it was. You know. So what how I'm old were you when you say okay? When it I'm it going, I want to say yeah. they brought it out like around. 16, 15, something. And what, what happened? Was it, yeah, right. what was Why you just so what happened was is I just happened to be around other Crip friends. Remember I told you about the other Crip right. friends? So I was hanging around the other Crip friends and they was banging Crip, you know, saying, on Crip this, on Crip that. Hey, that seemed cool. And it, it, it's cool to do that, you know? Like, it, that's the end thing to do. So if you're not saying on Crip, on Blood, on a gang, then you're not cool. You're not, you're not that, that nigga. You're not okay. that girl. You know, so you have to be doing some type of gang related activity in order to be a good person or a person that is that person in the industry or whatever the case may be in order to be accepted. You have to be doing that. Mm -hmm. Wow. Absolutely. Did you not think that it would be a dilemma with you being gay and a crip? Because I don't think I've ever heard nobody come out and openly say, I'm a crip, I bang crip, but I'm gay. I ain't heard nobody do that. Well, then again, you got to understand that. They're, they probably not. They probably not, a, you know, a crib. They probably was born in Keller, Cedar Hill. You know, those are not gang affiliated areas. You know, those, most gay people, you know, well, not, well, yes, most because, you know, the they few, live in those areas. Yeah, they live in those areas like Keller, you know, Cedar Springs, uh, stuff. Cedar Springs, you know, stuff like that, that have money. You know, most people that is doing gangster shit, you know, no money, you know. So that's why you don't see a lot of gay Crips or gay bloods, gay gang bangers. Me. Do you have more of them? They just haven't come out with it? I feel like that it's, and, and, and that's another thing that I want to bring to attention. It's probably a lot of people out here, because like I believe that in this world, 50% of people are straight, 50% 50, 50 of people are gay. But out of that 50%, 25% are in the closet, and the other 25% are openly gay like me so you gotta keep you gotta do the process it's a math when it come to gangster shit you gotta know your math you, when you come to being gay you gotta know your math you gotta understand all of that come into play and factor when you're dealing with this type of stuff wow mm -hmm. i want to go so um when you're born and raised when you're born as a kid mm -hmm. you weren't gay i was uh as a baby yes you want me to explain my gay coming out situation go ahead. okay so with my situation of being gay and how I started this is five, to six years old? Five, three. Three, okay, yeah. go but ahead. But we can even go as far as back as three years okay, old. Okay, go ahead. I knew, now I, let me just let you know, I was molested. By I was, a male. Uh, by a male. But by I how knew old? I was uh, about, I believe, somewhere around 11, 12. Okay. But let me just let you know that before I was even molested, I knew I was gay before I was molested. At you know that age, you don't even know what gay is. What are you talking oh, about? Oh, that's where you're wrong. Okay. You definitely do. You know when you start saying stuff like, what's that? What's this? You know, when you get to that age, when you trying to, when you picking up stuff, walking around, you know, uh, uh, you walking in your mama room and you see the vibrant. Like, it's, it's a lot of stuff. You, yes, I didn't walk in. How old were you when you saw your mama's About stuff? five. Okay, I can remember. But, but but that has nothing to do with being gay because kids are curious as in like they see stuff, they're going right. to ask questions. So but that has nothing to do with being that, gay. Okay. But during that time, you're learning. Okay. You're learning. While you're learning is a type of action. When you're able to do stuff like that, you're able to know. So learning is what teaches you to know. Go ahead. Was your father in the household? <laughs> he was in and out. So you were raised by a single mom? I was raised by my mother. Uh, my my um, dad was doing the thing to where he was still trying to get back with my mom after she left him. So they tried to do the whole little, let's work out the family to, for the baby. So he was present? Yeah, in and out. Mm -hmm. But not active. Mm. You know, so, but that's not what played a part in my okay. being gay. I knew at those early stages that I was not gonna be with a woman. Like I already knew, cause my they was they'll teach you. They'll say, "Well, you supposed to be with a woman." Yeah, you you see that? Ooh, look at the magazine. Where your little girlfriend at? You know, that's when your grannies and them and aunties, right. you know, they start playing. But I'm knowing in my mind, like you ask me where my girlfriend is, you need to be asking me where's my boyfriend at. Like you know, cause during those early stages, I knew that that's I'm what like, you was thinking. Yes, but I didn't want to say that. 
Because if you say it that, wasn't normal. it's not normal. Because all my other uncles, cousins and stuff, they have their girlfriends, wives, and stuff like that. Nobody actually had a boyfriend. So you didn't see that around you. Right. But I knew it around me. But do you not think that it was because of the the missing element of your father being Absolutely in the home? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I if don't. the father would have been in the home, it might have been different. It's nothing that no one can do to... People can only tell you their opinions and they can tell you how things are supposed to be, which I feel like nothing is supposed to be anything. I feel like the goal in life is to try to be happy. I don't feel like there's no right or no wrong. You just got to be happy. If you're doing what's making yourself happy, then you're doing what's right. Let, yeah. let me ask you this question. Okay, and this is... The way how I question, I question things that I know that everybody else probably thinking, mm -hmm. but some people are scared to ask. Mm -hmm. um, so you believe in God? Do. Okay, you read well, the Bible. Excuse me. I do believe in God, but I've had other things come in my life that has question that's made me question. Okay, which a lot of people that's right. Normal. Normal. Mm -hmm. Um, you read the Bible for yourself before. I did. Okay, of course everybody know in the big in the beginning of the Bible, you talk about you know reproduction. Right. Talk about man and woman. Mm -hmm. So when you see those things in the Bible. What is your perception on that? About as far as like how the Bible says that you're not supposed to be, you know, mm -hmm. you're supposed to like a He's woman. A woman okay. and a man. So the Bible says that God makes no mistakes. Mm -hmm. So if God makes no mistakes, then actually a mistake is not actually a mistake. A mistake is normal. So you can't say that being gay was, because um, if that's the case, then God do make mistakes. But it specifically says God don't make mistakes. So... Everybody has their own free will to do what they want to do. But also, being gay, I want to express, is not a choice. It's a given. So that's just like, if can I ask you, you, you like just only men, right? Right. Okay, so nobody can come and say, like this woman. There's mm -hmm. no way for you to physically, scientifically, sp spiritually, physically be able to do that because that's not who you are right so if somebody comes and say tony no this is not right you have to start talking to a woman i won't be able to do that i could maybe act on it but i wouldn't be able to connect in that type of way you know what i'm saying i believe that everybody goes through things for a reason right um because i've known other people who have been gay mm -hmm. and eventually changed their life and mm -hmm. ended up being straight okay and because i know that um in order to testify to other people, right. you have to be able to relate to other people. Right. So I always say that those are the people who can be able to touch people who are gay, who mm -hmm. are uncertain, who, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if this is where I need to be, da, da, da. They can be able to, because I can't talk, talk to a person who is gay and say, hey, I understand this, 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 mm -hmm. this, this. But a person who hasn't been there and so forth, they can. Right. Um, so, um, that's the reason why I feel like God, he said, God don't make no mistakes. Right. He put us through certain things so that we can overcome our adversi right. adversaries to be able to help others to be able to move forward with right. their lives into victory. But again, when I think about back in the days, you know, God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah because right. of things that they were doing that, yes, he had to do that. So when we look back on the Bible and see, oh, he did that because they were doing this. We're still using that as an example, although they're not here right. to say we don't need to be doing that, too. So do you believe in um, generational curses and things of that nature? I do, but I believe that you can break it. Right. OK. I, so, I, I, let me say ahead. this. I don't want to cut y'all off, but I want to tell you anyway, you know, God loves you no matter who you are, no matter what you're right. doing, no matter where you at. I think a lot of times people put emphasis, it, whether I'm That's a liar. 100. That's 100. Mm -hmm. What, whether I'm a liar, whether I'm a stealer, whether I'm doing whatever, mm -hmm. uh, whether I'm gay, whether I'm straight, whether whatever, God loves you where you're at. I don't think nobody is stuck in any position where they will never change into something else, no matter if you change into more gay or more mm -hmm. observant of straight or whatever. I just know that everybody's evolving. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So that's a that's the only thing mm -hmm. I do know. So I don't really put people in boxes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I just think that everybody's good. And I think that's where people really mess up when because I don't want to try to tell nobody what they can and cannot do. Right. I would never do that. Right. But at the end of the day, I just know God loves you where you because He yeah. made you. I appreciate mm -hmm. that. You know what I'm saying? And that's it. That's all I, yes, I care about. I definitely appreciate you know? that. And I feel like that um every, Everything happens for a reason. 
like you said, you know, he came. Right. You know, and it's about to gonna come back. Mm-hmm. So, you know, but I feel like everything that is going on right now is a part of a plan. So if no sin is supposed to be bigger than the other. Exactly. So regardless if I'm gay, people lie, steal, steal kill, kill, right. Do all this other type of stuff. So, okay. It's gonna be people after that that come and still kill. You know, do I be gay and Whatever. repent for your sins right. and move forward? And then to what you're person. supposed to do is you're supposed to pray for ask for forgiveness because I know mm-hmm. I, what I'm what I do is wrong. Regard anything I do more than just be gay. Shit, I didn't <laughs> right. I didn't did some other shit that ain't right. Shit, being a crip ain't right. You know this crip <laughs> thing, man. I'm, I'm going back. This, this, this part right here, I'm stuck. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because I I you know being a crip. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm gonna go back to this. Your grandma was a crip. Your great grandma was a crip. You yes. told me earlier, well, and and so you born into this crip, crip. crip. Your granddad granddad was a crip. Mm-hmm. Granddaddy was a crip. Mama, all that. Everybody was crip, and so you didn't have no other choice. Didn't have no choice. Then friends was crips. Oh yeah, I had to be a crip. And you know the history on the crips. So I know that Raymond. Uh, his name, I forgot his last name. I think it's Raymond Washington mm-hmm. and Stanley something. Tookie. Yeah, there we go. So they're the founders of the Crip. So mind you, all Crip is was just a gang of people that came together for protection against other people. So, you know, if it's more than one, you know, you protect it, you know, because it's, it's more of more of y'all. So that's all it is. What does if, if that's mean? the case, if that's the case, then you could say that LGBTQ is a game. You could say that, uh, you know, all this stuff that people coming out with these organizations, you could say that's a game. The only thing is with Crip and Blood and all this gangster shit is that you add in the shooting and the and the drugs and the putting in work in the hood and all the other type of stuff. I don't feel like that. Well, actually, no, it, it is what makes you more gangster, but that's because that's what the strategics then made it you know that that you are not a gangster unless if you done been to jail this many times then been shot at then shot at stuff how many times you been to jail i've been to jail about 30 times damn i've been to jail for fraud i've been to jail for organized crime Fraud. yes how old well, it started uh, 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 hold on hold on uh, fraud fraud can you uh, is the case still open because i don't want you to say it case closed could you explain to me what happened uh i was going to walmart and I was loading up Visa cards with other Visa cards and putting the money onto those cards and withdrawing the money at ATMs. I got caught and convicted. They had me on camera doing everything so I could talk about all this. So that's what I was doing. So that was fraud. How old were you at that time? I was 21. How old were you when you got caught the first time? 21. That was my first time. Oh, that was time. your first time? Yes, that was my first time getting and you did. How old are you now? 27. And you get 30 times between now and then? Uh, I, I started, my first time going to jail was when I had a fight at 16. Okay. Uh huh. I went to jail, I had a fight in the park, went to jail, uh, caught the uh, fraud case, went to jail, went back and forth to jail between steps because I was on, got put on probation, violated like 10 times. Then. How would you, how did you keep violating? You kept stealing? I kept doing the same shit. Was you stealing or was you doing fraud? No, I wasn't fraud? stealing, I was doing fraud. Every time you go I don't get steal. it. So you you just go I kill. No. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> you just go get the cards and load them up. Yeah, if you take Visa, you take you get on the uh tour browser. Okay. Get on dark market. You download the bin numbers. You swipe them on. I had us they caught my swipe card and everything. It's okay. Okay. And, and uh <laughs> you put it on the credit card and you go on Walmart and you pay for the prepaid Visa card with a uh, credit card that you created. And then you put that money on there. And then you go to the ATM, withdraw it out. And this was a part of your crip career, like being part in crime. Of my dad, I would say that that was my crip <laughs> career. career right there. You know, you got to do something bad. Yeah. In order to, you know, it got to be something bad, no matter what it is. Shooting, credit card, don't matter. So when you were doing all of this bad stuff, you, because you said you wanted to be a crip when you were 16. So you mm-hmm. just started re- you know, doing the bad stuff, going to jail. You started going to jail for fight at 16, mm-hmm. but then really did this at 21. So were you doing this purposely to build up your repertoire? A little of crit? both. A little of both because you got to do something bad, be a gangster. And then on top of it, I was needing to make some money. So I didn't want to sell drugs. Now I did sell some drugs. What? Uh-huh. I was dating a blood, actually. You know? What? Yeah. 
I was dating. I, that ain't against the rules. <laughs> well, I don't. I feel like that. You know, nowadays, you know, everybody's being cool with everybody. You see some straight niggas being cool with gay niggas, like, and it don't be nothing. So you some bloods hanging around some. Crit- I like, you know, my homeboy Kenny B. He's a blood. I, yeah. yeah, yeah, he a blood, and that's my homeboy. So we cool. There's no law against that. So y'all never had no issue, and you nah. ain't never set tri- anybody ever set trip on you by nah. being a crib. No, nah. like coming at you like, would well, you cribbing go? You in the wrong neighborhood? No, nah, they know when they see Tony. Oh yeah, we he just by my presence, they just know. Oh yeah, that's Tony. Yeah, oh yeah, he official. He pressure. So you know they know that. Like that's when you. That's another thing. When you a gangster, you ain't gotta speak. It's just gonna. It's just gonna be that. That's just what it it's is. It's in you. It's in you. So nobody has to question. Nobody gotta wonder. They just gonna know when you walk in the room. Oh yeah, that nigga gangster. And that's so nobody. And the funny thing about. So do you wear like? Will you wear a, a whole red outfit? I sure will. I have. I don't have no problem with. I bleed that. So there's no problem with. Uh, because wearing if you cribbing, you wear blue. I got on red in my promotion picture. Mm, for these I know movies. that, but I'm just saying, like, because <laughs> most scripts won't wear red. Nah, they, nowadays I feel like they will. It's, it's times didn't change. Oh yeah, mm. we. I remember the old so, school. You know, old school people would say y'all watering down the crib. Yeah, I mean, but you got to get with the time zone. You got to get with the time. This is a new generation. You know, it, this is the time of coming together. Bloods are hanging with Crips. Crips is hanging with Bloods. You know, I, I got a lot of blood friends, then dated bloods. So you know? do you think that because you're coming out being a um, crip um, gay, mm-hmm. do you think that others would want to step out now because of Yeah, I'm going to be like, you know, the little Nicki Minaj of the gay world. You know, she the first, like, really popping female rapper, you know. I'm going to be the first popping gangster rapper. Mm-hmm. Gay rap, gangsta gay rapper. When did you start rapping? How old were you? I started rapping in 2020. I was 24. I came out with my okay. first single called I Guess She Mad. And it was based off some other street shit that was going on with a bunch of bitches. Mm. Uh, my homegirl pulled up to fight a blood. She's a crip. And they was fighting. They wasn't fighting over no gangster. Sh- I mean, no no street involvement stuff like shooting this and shooting that up. But it was actually over a nigga. But she was a blood. She was a crip. And... I made a song based off of the fact that my crip friend was fighting the blood, blood. bitch. Mm. And it, it did pretty good. I filmed that music video with Half Pint Films. Y'all familiar with him? Yeah. He's mm-hmm. yeah. supposed to be in here today. What? Mm-hmm. But he ended up, he'd come next week sometime. But don't, don't, don't trip. Oh, I could have. <laughs> you know, I didn't work with him. So, so the thing is, like, you basically... Um, what what do you say to people who say you just doing this just to be get, get to get seen? Well, for one, uh, the song that I made uh, was not even about crip nothing, gangster nothing. It was just a song about fuck a nigga. That's the name of my song. I just came out with. It's basically a, it's for women. I'm more pro women than I am anything. So the I have a high female fan base. So I made the song for my fans about if they going through a relationship problems. And I started a whole movement. It's called the Fuck a Nigga Movement. And yes. And it's just so happened that towards the end of the song, I put the crip shit in there. You know, and that part, it's always the part that you don't even think, gonna, don't even have no idea it's going to get a lot of attention to get a lot of attention. Mm-hmm. And it's just so happened that part got all the attention. And what's the attention? What did everybody say about it? They was like, crip. He gay though. He talking about a nigga in the song, like you know. So they like how he a crip and he a, and he gay. They do that, but you know, I, you know, yes, we do that. Have you gotten death threat, death threats? Uh, they bet not play with me. No, I have not. They probably didn't comment it some shit like that. But do they mean that? No. Oh, okay. I'm gonna walk right past them. They not gonna do shit. I kill that. Wow. So have you ever uh, ran up on some and had a problem? Cause you know, felt you felt like you you know, um, like like the, they wasn't you know they wasn't in like the right it was location. some other it was some other, other game banging you know. And I came I'm looking, yeah came yeah like confronted the absolutely situation. Absolutely not. They shook my hand and was like, yeah, that's Tony motherfucking weird. So it's like they just respect you when you come in the hood. Yeah, my homegirl Robin just called her crip ex and uh confirmed that it's okay. She asked him what type of what type of crip is Tony? Is it okay for crip? He started laughing. He cool with it. 
He's so people just keep affirming uh, that it's okay. Yeah. For, uh, and and the these are certified that, people that these are certified people. And the more these people do that, the more it makes okay for what I'm doing. And but the, is that only okay for Fort Worth because everybody know you and you? That's where you're born and raised. Have you ever you been to LA? I have. I've been to Compton. And what? they know. Have you went over there and be like, "Yeah, I'm a great, I'm a um, gay crip." Da da. Uh, actually, um, I was in Compton in the project part, the worst part. Okay. Uh, I was there around the EDD times. Remember the EDD mm -hmm. you know, when everybody was doing that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not saying I was doing that, but you know, <laughs> um, I went and knocked on somebody's door because I had some mail that I had got accidentally sent to their address, and I was like, "Oh, I need this mail," so I knocked on that motherfucking door, and you know, I was like, "Oh, crib, open, open this door," you know, and they came outside like, what, "What's going on?" And I got my mail. But did they know you were gay? I was doing all this, like, yeah, cause period, bitch, you gonna give me my mail, like, you know, I was doing all that, and right. there was some niggas in there too that I guess was a type of, you know. Doing doing this and stuff, mm -hmm. so and they didn't say none to <laughs> they you. They didn't say shit. They gave me my motherfucking mail. Wow! I got back in the car and drove off, mm. and they was cool with it. Okay. So you tell me this happened in California that you were cripping Compton, California, Compton, Compton. California, mm -hmm. and you approached the door mm -hmm. and somebody and you straight up banged on them, banged yeah. on their door, and he mentioned crib, and banged on them, and part said, of on the crib, open on this door, crib, open this door. <laughs> And and they and they gave your mail and wasn't they no problem. They gave me my mail. It was not no problem. They was happy to give me my mail. So I, that's what I'm saying. So at the end of the day, I don't know. Like like <laughs> man, it, it look like look like you you out here. So you you going back to Cali anytime soon? Uh, I have a, a Vlad had posted me, so we're trying to lock in with them so I can get uh go out there and you know chop it up with them. And they in L. A. Wow, so you so. And, and so you you do you think they'll embrace you the the crib nation because everybody gonna be seeing these interviews? Yeah, well, like I said in them comments, keep it cute in person. In the comments, do what you do. He don't care about the comments. Don't care about the comments. You can say whatever you want to say in the comments. Go in the comments. Uh, they they can talk their shit there. That's what it's for. In person is a different story. You're going to keep it cute. You're going to be respectful. You're going to acknowledge me as Tony motherfucking weirdest bitch. And that's just what it's going to be. Wow. <laughs> you got, you, you got a, a song called, with, with Head Honcho? Or called, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, that's a fight with Head Honcho and Tony Weirdest. Uh, Were you fighting Head Honcho? Oh, uh, oh you my God. Oh, you pulled that up. <laughs> <laughs> um, that fight was... Is this on Crip? No. And it was filmed? <laughs> Uh, that fight, uh, he was mad because, like, you know, he a blood, and well, it, it ain't, it don't got nothing to do with him being mad, like about me saying I'm false claiming nothing like that, you know. But he was a blood, you know. I'm a crib, and I was over there, and they shit, you know, and you know, we we just did what we did, you know. We we fought. Now I was a lot smaller back then than I was. I didn't gain a little weight, and so you got, got beat up. Yeah, I mean, I was. That nigga <laughs> got on. <laughs> I was, look, I. Uh, fights are different. <laughs> <laughs> fights are different on the camera. In person, it's a whole different story. Like when you actually there to see the fight, I won. But on the phone, it just looked bad. It just looked bad on the phone. But I was really like up a cup. Of, the camera didn't see this arm over oh, there. Oh, that was the arm they, action. They, they was recording on the on the right. I'm over here with this left arm punching them over here. They didn't see that. They, they didn't see that. They missed that they, left. They missed that left. His whole side of his face was swollen up and everything. So it looked like I got beat up because they was recording on this side. And you were not swollen up. I was not swollen up. I was not swollen up, but it looked it bad because he bigger than me and I was a little, little bit littler than him. And so, but I was really whooping him. You would get out there. Really you, was, you, was, you, was, you was really like you. You basically would get out there if, if somebody try you when it comes down. Absolutely, to, I don't do no running. And, and if a nigga test you, your cripping, you, 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 you square out with gonna, it. I'm, 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 I'm telling you, and I'm gonna win. I'm gonna win the fight. He said the first time he went to jail was because he was in a fight. Yes, that's all you do is fight. I do. And that's all the proof I need for how, Crip. How do you think people gonna react to you being the first openly gay Crip? Um, they're probably going to you know talk they shit, make it seem like oh he's lying. But when I come with the receipts, they gonna shut up. The first time when you decide to come out with this information, mm -hmm. um, 
how long were you procrastinating this before you actually came out with it? So the first time I came out with this information was in 2020 when I came out with my first song. Remember the I Guess She Mad song I told you about? Mm -hmm. And I said something about, uh, yes, it is true. I am a crip. I'm rocking blue. No cap in my drip. Southside Hoover. I am a gangster. You ain't no rapper. You just a cap. But I really bled a bunch of blood. I done been shot at a bunch of bloods. I done been shot at and tossed in dirt. But no one gonna put me on a shirt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Stop playing, man. So I I had to let them know. <laughs> Boys, <laughs> serious. I had to let them know that no one gonna put me on a shirt. Like you're not gonna do nothing about it. Basically, like you know, because that's. But were you scared to come out with this information? I'm not. That's why I did it. Mm. You know, and you know that song. Like I said, that song was shot by Half Pint Film. Mm -hmm. You know, I had my little gun and everything, and I was letting it be known. Like I pulled out the gun, let them know. Like ain't nobody gonna put me on a shirt. Wow, mm -hmm. um, being. Uh, Charleston White. Okay. You um, you in Fort Worth? I mean, have you ever dealt with Charleston White? I have not dealt with him, but we have gotten into a social media <clears throat> confrontation. Confrontation, yes. And um, it was because um, I actually uh, was doing a podcast in my home city, uh, T M S M O is what I call the podcast. And we, my team hadn't reached out to Charleston White and tried to get him to come be a part of the podcast. So we signed everything, you know, chopped it up on the phone, talked to his management team. But then he called one day and was like, I want to talk to Tony. I answered the phone and he said, hey, how you doing? I'm like, hey, what's going on? What's going on, Charleston? You, you fucking faggot. You, 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 you are, uh, you like, you know, then out of nowhere, just got to call me out type of, you, you punk. What the fuck? I'm a, what am I do with a punk? You want me to come on that, that gay ass podcast? Like, you know, just talking shit. And that's what made me want to whoop his ass. But I said, I, I can't do that. Senior citizen. You know, I'm not going to be going to jail for assault on a senior citizen. And you know, he probably was live at that moment when he called you and said that. And he was. And mm -hmm. After he did that, after, you know, they sent me my, sent our star stuff back because we had actually booked him. So they canceled it and everything. He went on his platform a few days later and told everybody about the situation, about us trying to get him to come out. Like, what the fuck I'm going to do with a punk? And he talked all type of shit, talk, pulled up my cases. That's why you said about him calling the police. He was threatening to call the police on me, saying, I'm going to report you for doing fraud and scamming and all this other type of stuff. I'm like, I'm already convicted for that. There's nothing you can do. That's why I'm comfortable coming on these podcasts talking about my talking cases about because it. I've already been convicted, caught, and everything else, video camera. Served time. Served everything. time, everything. So that didn't scare me, but it was just the fact that you really got us all the way to the point to where you was finna get ready to come on the show just for you at the last minute to say all this shit and go on your platform and do all that stuff. So that, that really fucked me. That that fuck with me. So you you you, you so you 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 would be willing to work with him again? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I, have I, you seen him since? I have not seen him, but uh, a guy that I was dealing with told me that they saw him at Popeye's Chicken on Brentwood's there, uh, ordering a two piece. <laughs> what? <So. laughs> he was ordering a two piece. Oh, yeah, what? two piece dark. <laughs> you sure got a lot of information. I he was next to him listening to his order. I was like, I don't care what he's ordering. Shit. Uh, so, so you you say you you the first openly gay crip rapper, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I want to ask you: you have dated rappers, mm -hmm. known rappers. One, I dated one known rapper. Who? And. I can't tell you that. Ooh. That's the only. I know I told y'all that we could talk about anything, but yeah. I don't want to out nobody. You know, I'm gonna let. So he's down, down low right now. He's down low. Oh, okay. But I've also dated uh, uh, two bloods that's in the gang affiliated area, very heavy, and I dated one rapper, and it was fun. And all the guys that you've dated. Are they down low? Everybody was down low except one person, and that was my longest relationship for eight years. He was an openly person, but I blast his ass. You know, I, but that only reason I blasted him was because this was back when I was young and I used to do stuff like that. But when I became older and started dating other people and was more mature, I don't do that. I don't want to blast nobody. I want to let them come out on their own if they ever do that, which they not. I know he ain't ever going to do that. 
But why would you want to date somebody who's down low and not somebody who's just open? And, you know, I told myself that after I got out of the relationship with the last down low person I got to and told myself I was not going to talk to no nobody, no more undercover men because uh, if you still messing with men and then you also messing with women, that's how diseases and stuff get spread. And I don't agree with that. You know, and we trying to move into this new, better world and all this stuff going on. They coming out with the edge, you know, all this stuff. Like, I'm not trying to support no bad habits, you know, because they don't do nothing but just spread diseases and stuff. And so, you've never been attracted to a female ever? Have not. I've never like Not even women. one? Mm -mm, no. Now, I didn't had oral with another female and I didn't like it. And when she did that, I, shit, I, I just did not like it. I didn't like the feeling of nothing. But when I'm with men, I just, it's better. Men just better. <laughs> wow. Um, so you, you definitely, uh, you, you threw out a lot of, lot of, lot of surprises to mm -hmm. me today. Um, mm -hmm. I, you know, I did not know that, you know, I didn't know how this interview would go. Mm -hmm. I, I was called in by my guy, uh, Supreme called me up and, um, I just, you know, basically wanted to see what, was going on with you, you know, far as, you know, the way you, you get down with your your whole cripism. You know, right. I never have dealt with a gay mm -hmm. crip. <laughs> uh, uh, I've had the original gangster crips on this show. Mm -hmm. I've- uh, Does OG Percy came here? Yeah, <laughs> that's the original gangster. Oh yeah, well see, he said it was okay. Yeah, so, yeah, so. yeah, he been here mm -hmm. um, a few times. And uh, yeah, and that's one of the ones who, who you feel like that's your momentum. That's one of the ones that really give you the momentum to. Yeah. Yeah, he yeah. said it was okay. He so. said because of him, he's a super crip. Yeah. A and that might be my new rap name. Might super super crip. crip. Wow. And, and I, I know, I, you know, like I said, I don't know how, how, how. You know, blue is in the rainbow. So that's even more okay. You know, gay people is the rainbow. It's blue in there. Damn. It's just so much. It's too much to even handle. Like, so. What are you? What's the music gonna be? What's the next uh, uh, project that that's coming? So um, I got another little crip song that's coming out. Got a little crip song that's gonna come out. Now after that come out, I'm done. I'm gonna do that. And after that, I ain't doing no more crip song. That's gonna be. This is straight up gonna be about. It's crip. just about everything. Basically, everything I just told you about me coming up and all that stuff. That's what it's gonna be about. I'm gonna do a music video to it. I'm gonna shoot it and I'm gonna get some buy some people together. We're gonna record the music video and after that I'm be done and I'm just start rapping about other stuff. I'm gonna rap about regular stuff. I'm be I ain't gonna give y'all no more crip stuff. Wow. Mm -hmm. So I know Kenny B was uh gonna bring you uh mm -hmm. over here the yes. day y'all got uh detained and mm -hmm. arrested and all kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um is he home? He will be Monday. He's he just posted bond. Um and when he gets out, uh, he's about to, you know, change his surroundings and like really try to like get back on his rap and stuff because he's been getting in more trouble than he has been. I seen him still off on somebody. What, what, that what? might have been an old video, but I seen him. He, yeah, he, he he had some shoes on, some little. I don't know what them little slide looking shoes were, uh -huh. but I, yeah, it popped up on my timeline. I don't new? know if that was recent or old. I, it might have been old, but I know he. He definitely swung on somebody, and I was like, "Man, I hope that's old." You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because uh, he ain't been in. Well, no, he has been in trouble, but I ain't know about him having no fight. I know he was about to fight a lot of times, but I have not been there with him actually having a fight. Now, when he gets out of jail this time, he finna get back on his rap and stuff. We not he's he's not doing no more. You know. All that gangster stuff, like okay, yeah, it's cool, but it's time to put that on pause for a little bit so we can focus on the music, you know, because that's what's important. That's what's gonna bring in the money. You he was in the drugs no more. Yeah, you was in the car with him when when they he went to jail. I was. I was. And like he went live, and it was like I, I was waiting on him to get here. Uh, we was almost here. We fifty minutes away from Fort Worth, about almost an hour. And we pulled in the KFC because I was just hungry. I, we we could have pulled in here, but be glad we didn't come here because they would have came and got us from here. Yeah. We pulled in the KFC. I pulled in, and a truck come through the front of KFC. So I'm like, oh no, you going the wrong way. The, the you go this and way. And there's a KFC down the street. Yeah. So I'm trying to tell the police, you know, go that way to get the order. That motherfucker got out the police with that a bazooka. 
grenades, a bazooka, bombs, uh, everything that you could think of. It's police coming from out the bushes, out of portals, out the sky, raining police. I was just waiting on the police to, to come out the ground. And, it, it, you know, and then it, it shocked me because we way out here. I, damn, this is Dallas, right? Mm hmm. I thought it was going to be Dallas police. Then it was Fort Worth police. Mm. They stopped. But what uh, did they say they be... to you, though, when they... Hold on. What did they say? They said, Tony, get out the car. They knew my name. How they know your I name? I guess they watched the Tony show. I don't know. They they got out that motherfucking car. They pulled out guns. It, uh, I was waiting for the dogs, the canines, it, it, everything. I knew a tank was going to pull up next. Because a helicopter, they was everywhere. The police was... I covered the whole KFC. KFC could have catered to us and cooked everybody some chicken, and like it, it was just too much. I just I, I I didn't know what was going on. I was scared. I was panicking, and you know, and I'm used to stuff like this. Did you have to get on the ground? I personally didn't have to give out get on the ground. Kenny B and his friend did because they was being disrespectful to the police. They was cussing the police out. I was like, well, I ain't never did no shit like that. I ain't cussing no police out. Now, that's the one thing I am scared of, the police. So I followed instructions. I got out the car. I cooperated. Yes, the, sir. No, sir. You know, I wasn't finna get treated like, I, yes, ma'am. No, no ma'am. Because it was a big, uh, uh, oh, I'm not supposed to be disrespecting the police. But it was a woman police. Mm. And she uh, she took my hands and put me in them handcuffs. But meanwhile, can you be in them face, ground, face to the ground, foot on the neck, like, Make uh, what's his name? They passed. Uh, George, mm -hmm. Floyd. George Floyd. I thought that was gonna be another George because he he was just being so disrespectful to the police. I was like, yeah, I can't do that. I'm gonna be nice. And I got treated so good by the police. They put me in the, in the car with the air conditioning, checking on me. You okay, baby? Yes. I'm like, yeah, okay, okay, it's okay. We'll be we're gonna let you go in a minute. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Damn. Did you have? A, did you get to take the car and ride away, or did they? They uh, the police got in my car and drove it out the line. I'm looking. Yeah, because they're blocking the line. Yeah, I'm. it's other cars behind us. I'm looking. I'm like, did they just get in my car? Did did, did y'all steal my car? Like, what is this? Is this a setup? Like, is, am I we going to jail? Or, like, what's going on? I'm All not, of this should have been on social media summer because the cars behind would have been would have been videoing the whole thing. I mean, I did see other people video and stuff, but I think there's a lot of other videos that I ain't leaked yet or got it. I'm probably coming soon. But, yes, it, it was very scary. Like, it was. You know, and I didn't been through this before, but I'm not trying to get through into the ground and all this. I know to be respectful to the police. That's that's it. And I ain't gonna snitch or nothing, but I'm gonna be respectful. But let me ask you a question: Wouldn't they be out of jurisdiction because they're coming all the way from Fort Worth and they're in <laughs> Dallas County? Man, let me tell you something. Them folks work together, man. All these yeah. folks work together. It, it's a blue coat, so you, you, they can do whatever. They had their vests on. They was ready. I was like, now if y'all just knew, it, we not gonna do nothing. Just y'all, y'all could have came with one car and took that one person to jail and let me drive home. Wow. Let me ask you about. We had a, a another. You, you, my third gay guest. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I never thought I would even interview, but I have to be unbiased. Right. You know, what I'm saying I'm definitely not homophobic. Right. But I definitely never seen me interviewing. Uh, it's so different. Yeah. It's different. So. I, I had Gutter K on here. Gutter K was, was uh, he was on Zeus TV mm -hmm. when I had him on. You aware, do you know who Gutter K is? I know who Gutter K is. Gutter K and me, he knows me. Oh, you know, the look on your face seemed like you really don't get along with Gutter K. You know, um, I knew that he was coming up here. You did? Mm -hmm. How did you know? I heard through the grapevine. For real? Yes. And, you know, I, I actually, you know, wanted to come up here and chop it up with him, you know, see if he remembered me. What so happened? He, how, do, how would he remember you? How do he even know you? Oh, he knows exactly who I am. He might not tell you he knows who I am, but he knows that he took that thousand dollars and ran off. He took and some I, money from he you? He took some money from me and I, I just want to come up here, you know, take my jacket off, sit down not next to him and ask him, hey. Remember that thousand dollars that you took from me? How did he? How did he get that? So, um, outside of my rap career and everything, I do. A, I film a reality show um, in Fort Worth, and my team had reached out to Gutter K to uh, ask him to like come do a part in. And he was also supposed to bring his friend Shamar. You how know? long ago was this? This was about four or five months ago. Okay. Uh, Y'all feel familiar with Shamar, mm -hmm. the letter crooked letter K? Uh, shape fella um, 
they were, you know, friend, their friends or whatever, and I asked them to come and be a part of my stuff that I had going on. So, you know, we booked them and everything, got everything signed, and he never showed up, and he never sent his uh, payment back. And I just feel like that was so unprofessional. I feel like that that's not good for the industry. And I feel like if you're doing that and you're going to be in this type of business, then you don't need to be in this type of business. Mm. So that's for everybody that's planning on booking him. You know, he ran off with that thousand dollars. So just be careful for how much you book him for. Wow. Yeah. I never would have thought that because it seemed like he had a pretty good career going with the Zeus TV and the boys. What is mm -hmm. that? Do? Yeah. But everything Bad that looks good, good ain't good. Club. Everything that looks so, good ain't good. So, I mean... You have a TV show. Mm -hmm. What's the name of your TV show? The name of my network is called Tony Rivers Network, and the name of the show is called Tony's Cabaret. Now we're getting ready to change that name because it don't it don't fit with what we did. It turned into something else. We thought it was going to be about a bunch of strippers, but it turned up being mess, drama, and fights, and relationship problems and stuff like that. Like so, all these reality TV mm -hmm, shows. Mm -hmm. And next season, we're going to change the name to Tony's Toxic Drama and Tea. Um, and it's just going to be about all of the toxic and drama and mess that I be Where do you put this out at? It's on an app called Tony Weaver's Network, TWN. Uh, you go on the app store. You can download it and watch all my shows. And we also have the reunion that's getting ready to come out. Do you get views? It does. Um, How many views we we do live stream it also on Tony Weaver's Network Facebook page every Monday. And we do anywhere from... 2K to 3K streaming live That's at the good. same time. That's good. And um, it, it, it does really good. And I see it really doing uh, 10 times better next season because we made the mistake. So we know what not to do next time to make it even better. We got a reunion that's getting ready to come out. And we got a surprise for the reunion. Y'all want to tune into the reunion. Wow. Well, I, I just want to say, well, first of all, let me ask you your top three uh, artists of all time, dead or alive, any genre. Any genre. Okay, and uh, any three. any gay, I mean, excuse me, any rapper. <laughs> look at me. <laughs> Ain't nobody saying nothing about no damn gay Tony Rich. Okay. You tripping? Okay, my bad. Any rapper alive? Any rapper? Anybody, alive. not just gay. Let's just, let's move forward. take the chains off your brain. Okay, it's everybody. Okay, the world. I just universe. Yeah. All right. Tupac. Tupac, you're number one. Why? Number two. Oh. Uh, he had. Well, for one, he didn't done some extravagant stuff. Like, okay, he faked his death. Then, you know, he faked made like his death. Some, yeah, faked his death. He's still alive. Are Where you is he? He's still alive. Where he faked is he? his death. He went back to whatever planet he came down here from. You know, that a lot of you know, y'all gotta y'all gotta start getting into stuff. Y'all gotta start researching stuff. I'm telling y'all. What planet yes. did he come from? I don't know. The, uh, something of uh, scepters B or whatever they be calling them planets that's way off in the other universes and stuff like that. So yeah. he faked his death. Faked his came here, did did what that, he had to do on Earth. Changed, you know, died, but really left. So it's you know, he he's he's still alive. He's just not here. So you're never gonna see him. But he's still out there. Wow. Number right. two. Number two. <laughs> number two Who's your number two? Oh, that's what you're asking me. Uh, number two artist. Can it be a girl? I don't Anybody. Care. Beyonce. Okay. No. You love Beyonce. I do. Beyonce, the baddest bitch on the planet right now. You a part of the beehive? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> What do you like about Beyonce? Uh, she just had the best songs. Um, she, like, any, that's just who you go to, like, when you think of the industry. Like, you're going to, it's going to, Beyonce is always going to be in the list of anything. She didn't been in movies, made songs, she didn't do did hip hop music, she didn't work with damn near everybody. Beyonce, she could dance, then had the, oh, I was single, like, like, like I, I still be singing that song. Uh, a soldier I don't want to stand up for me mm, 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 mm. Oh God <laughs> Who is your number three? Number three Greatest artist of all time Michael Jackson Got it Wow that Thriller <laughs> What's that Thriller? What's that song? Uh, whatever I mean, He got so many songs What uh, What you think your hardest bar is in, in that song the, the newest one That one that you they keep talking about you a gay creepy. And what's the, what's hard the hardest bar? Uh, that nigga ain't got no car. That nigga ain't got no whip. That nigga ain't got no crib. That part. Because it's about why you shouldn't fuck with uh, 
a broken man. You shouldn't fuck with any of the broken men out here. Broken men are people that don't got no car, ain't got no wheel, ain't got no creel. Them the ones. Them the broken men. You got to at least have something to bring to the table. Wow. Especially with me being, see, because I'm, I'm on the feminine side. See, I don't have to bring nothing to the table. When a man say, what do you bring to the table? Nothing. Me. You supposed to bring everything to the table. If you ask me to bring something to the table, I'm gonna. It's gonna be another man, and that's not gonna ask me to bring nothing to the table. So, <laughs> and that's just that. Wow. Thank y'all. Man, um, looking forward to to the new music, man. Mm-hmm. And uh, like I told you before, man, I don't. Of course. I might not feel the same way you do about the lifestyle you choose. Mm-hmm. But I'm I'm open to whatever God is gonna do in your yeah. life. I, I told you that earlier. Yeah. That's the way I look at it. I'm not for the being here trying to criticize nobody. Right. I'm not for the being here trying to tell you you can't you can't do this. It's just like anything else. It'd be like me telling anybody whatever. But I am gonna say, you know, everybody keeps evolving. Right. Everybody keep growing. Right. Keep you how old are you again? Twenty seven. By the time you turn thirty seven, it'll be a whole different ball game yeah. no matter how you look at it. Right. Take it from an older cat. Right. You know what I'm saying? I, I appreciate it. I appreciate <laughs> it. But I, I can't wait to see what come with your career and everything. Right? Oh, I'll be back. I have to tell you uh, that yeah, what yeah, happened. I want, well, yeah. when, the show, when the show get buzzing and hot, you'll be back here in a minute anyway. Okay. From the I'm interview you did on. today, I'm pretty sure you'll be back pretty quick. <laughs> okay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so check it, man. Hey, man. Thank you. We love you, bro. All right. Hey. Thank you. Thank you for coming on the show. It's been Tony Will Rich. Crip, Tony Real Crip. Tony motherfucking weird is, bitch. That's what it is. Cripping. Be cripping around this bitch. Yes. Tony motherfucking weird, bitch. Damn. Man, it's been another <laughs> great segment of Boss Talk. What a what a boss is talk. And we out.